Good morning, good morning to you all. Um, we're going to talk about malaria. And we can have the presentation starting. Good morning to you all. We are talking here today about a complex disease affecting millions of children in Africa. A disease that occurs primarily in Africa and is something as simple as being transmitted by an ordinary dead simple mosquito. That is amazing and it's unbelievable. But I'm not just going to talk about the complexity of malaria. I'm also going to try and give you some very, very simple solutions. The clicker. Can I have the clicker, please? Thank you. So a very simple solution. But first of all, I'm sorry, I have to give you the bad news. And the bad news is really that as we sit here in this, in this auditorium, that still every 45 seconds, somewhere in Africa, a child dies of malaria. That is, if I add it all up, around 655,000 children every year dying of malaria. And if you live in the tropics and you run the risk of being bitten by a mosquito, then it's three billion people around the planet that every single night when they sleep, they run the risk of being infected with malaria as a disease. That is massive. That's a very large proportion of society. Okay? What is malaria anyway? Malaria is a parasite. It's a parasite that lives in your red blood cells, inside your body. It eats up. The, the interior of your red blood cells in, in, a, in a way to reproduce, in a way to develop itself. And, and as a result of that, you suffer from all sorts of things. First of all, you can get a high fever, very typical for malaria, high fever. But you suffer often from terrible headaches. You suffer from things like vomiting. You suffer from diarrhea, which leads to dehydration, causing additional problems. Anemia, if all your red blood cells get eaten up by the parasite, you don't have enough blood in your body to take care of all your functions. Okay? And then that obviously will lead to organ failure, particularly of the kidneys. And organ failure then leads very quickly to a coma. You fall asleep and you never wake up. Death. That is malaria in a nutshell. Happening to millions of people around the world every year. And I told you, it's a complex disease. So here it is. This is malaria. This is malaria. And so if I'm going to show this to you, okay, then I'm going to give you five seconds now because you are students from the United World College. You're all very clever students. So you can memorize this whole picture, right? This is the complexity of malaria, where on the left we have the sporogonic cycle, the exoerythrocytic cycle, the erythrocytic cycle. You got it? No? Well, this is it. This is malaria. Okay. We're going to do it in a different way. I'm going to explain this to you in a different way. And I'm going to use this. These are two bread knives. When you think about malaria next time, you think about two bread knives. Okay? That's the easiest way to remember how malaria starts. Let's take a look at it. Malaria is a disease of the night. It happens at night when you're fast asleep. That's when malaria mosquitoes come to you and they bite you. And so here is this one mosquito now coming to this person. He's going to bite this person right here in the neck. There she is. And so if we take a closer look at this mosquito, then with these two red knives, she's now punching through your skin, trying to get access to the blood underneath your skin. So she's going in through your skin, and then she starts to suck blood. And if you take a closer look, you can very nicely see her mouth parts and how she's going underneath the skin, trying to get access to your blood. So if I take off the skin, and I take a look underneath the skin, you see all these small capillaries with the blood. And what the mosquito is doing is with these bread knives, she's chopping up these capillaries underneath your skin. And in doing so, she creates a little pool of blood that will immediately start clotting. And in order to prevent the clotting, she squids saliva into that small hole. And with that spit, she introduces the malaria parasite into your body. That's how the whole thing starts. 
start at night when you're fast asleep. And the first place that these parasites go to is your liver. They go into your liver. They hide in your liver. You're fast asleep, you don't notice anything. But once these parasites enter into the liver and you see one coming there from the top, a small little sporozoite, that's how we call it, it's finding its way into the bloodstream, into your liver, and then it's going to do something very peculiar. It's going to go inside your liver cells. It does so when it recognizes this gray cell, which is called a Kupfer cell, then it penetrates through another cell, which will die, and then it will hide in another liver cell. And there it will be for around 10 days. Multiply. Again, and again, and again, and again. Where there's one coming into a liver cell, after a week, you've got tens of thousands of parasites in one individual liver cell. And that liver cell is growing and expanding in size. And eventually, it is so big that it bursts open into your bloodstream. There it go. And now millions of parasites are entering your bloodstream. And, and of course, your immune system says, what the hell is going on? What's happening? And you get this soaring high fever. That's how your malaria starts. And now we are looking at the veins and you see these parasites rushing through the veins. And your immune system starts to kill them. And so the parasite has to find a new place where it can hide. And it does so in your red blood cells, right here. Like Velcro tape, it is attaching to the skin of the red blood cell and then very slowly moving into it, disappearing into the red blood cell, and now it's hiding from the immune system. And you feel okay again. But then within a few days, inside that red blood cell, that parasite again starts to multiply, 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 more and more parasites. And you can see here an infected red blood cell passing through the veins. And that's when the problem starts, because these cells are sticky. They stick in the small capillaries in your brain, making it impossible for healthy red blood cells to bring oxygen deep into the brain. And you see one of these sticky cells coming along here, obstructing the flow of healthy red blood cells. And when this whole full, suddenly... Boom. Inversal. And new parasites are now released. And these parasites, in turn, start invading healthy red blood cells. And this goes on and on and on and on. And if you don't do anything about it, these parasites will simply chew up all your healthy red blood cells until you die. That is malaria in human beings. But it's only half the story. This is only half the story of what has happened. Because we have another half of the story, and that is the half that is happening inside the mosquito, okay? So now you know everything about what's happening in humans, and I'm now moving on to what's happening inside the mosquito. Sorry. Hello? Yes. No, 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 I can't take your call. I'm on a ladder. I'm on a ladder in front of a screen. Yes, giving a TED talk. Sorry. Bye. Okay. We're taking a look at the mosquito. The mosquito has just taken a blood meal and we're taking off the skin. And our stomach is now filled with the blood that you just took from this person. A fully engorged female. And she uses the blood to produce eggs, to produce offspring. And if we look into her stomach and we see there the malaria parasite that she sucked up when she was taking the blood, you see these small little brown dots? Those are the malaria parasites. But these parasites will not survive inside the mosquito. The mosquito immune system will kill them. You see them dying off here. No, we are looking for a different kind of parasite. And we have to go back to the human. So here we are back in the human body. And we now see a red blood cell with a different shaped parasite in it. And that shape will survive inside the stomach of the mosquito. So let's go back to the stomach. Here we're back in the stomach. On the left, you see the female parasite, and on the right, you see the male parasite. And the female is growing. It's a big egg growing, and it's expanding. And eventually, it will burst. It will burst out of the red blood cell. And on the right here, you see the microgametes, like the equivalent of sperm. And that's going to fertilize the egg. So we see now a sperm cell coming up to the egg and fertilizing it. 
Remember, malaria parasites have sex in the stomach of a mosquito. That's how it works. Okay? So we get the fertilization of the egg, and then something remarkable is happening. This fertilized egg is now going to turn into a swimming cucumber. Look, turning into a swimming cucumber. In science, we call this an old tiny, but it's a swimming cucumber. That's what it is. Okay? And this swimming cucumber is surviving in the stomach of the mosquito. And now we're looking through the stomach wall. This is the stomach wall, and behind it we see these old tiny swimming there. And at some stage, these swimming cucumbers, they're actually coming up to the surface of the skin of the stomach and penetrating through it, coming out. And they form on the skin of the stomach, they form what is called an oocyst, like a football. And you can see this football through a microscope. If you look at a, a mosquito under the microscope, you see these little balls on the stomach. And after 10 days, the parasite again multiplies, multiplies, multiplies in these small little balls. New parasites come out. And these parasites, they swim. They swim in the body of the mosquito, all the way from the back to the middle part, to these green organs. And those are the salivary glands. And any time next, when that mosquito is taking now a blood meal on a human being, and she injects the spit to prevent the clotting of the blood, She's going to inject the parasite. That is malaria. Now you got it? Good. Very good. Excellent. Now, that is a very complex story, and it's a very complex disease. So how on earth do we find very simple solutions for it? And I'm going to show you that in a very short minute. Let's take a look. Okay. There we are. What do we have? We have in Africa, you see African people on top, we have people that are sick and people that are healthy. Healthy people get bitten by mosquitoes, and they become sick, okay? Very simple and straightforward. So they get bitten by mosquitoes, and these mosquitoes, they are in nature. They are breeding in small little pools of water. They come out of the water. They find a person at night who's sleeping there. They bite the person, and they pick up the parasite. They become infected with the malaria parasite. After some time, you can see now that this, you remember the swimming cucumber? That's what we see in the middle here. These yellow ones, they have swimming cucumbers, okay? So that takes time. And in the meantime, you get here on the left, you get mosquitoes dying. Mosquitoes don't always live that long, so they're dying. And after some time, from the swimming cucumbers, you get these balls on the stomach, these footballs that I showed you. And again, this will time, take time. So these are now infectious mosquitoes. They are dangerous because they have the parasite in the salivary glands. Okay, but in the meantime, mosquitoes again are dying off. So it is, only, it is only the old female mosquitoes that can give you malaria, that can make you sick. Young mosquitoes are completely harmless. It's only the old ones that are dangerous. So we have 10 to 14 days, that period in which we can try to control malaria and get rid of it. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, if somebody is sick, then what do you do? You go to the pharmacy and you buy drugs. Yeah? So one way of controlling malaria is just by giving the sick people drugs. But when I send the sick people home, that same night they are being bitten by mosquitoes again, and they are again infected with malaria. And then they have to go back to the pharmacy again, and then they get bitten by malaria. It doesn't really work, does it? So it's not a particularly good solution. Plus, if we're using these drugs all the time, then malaria parasites, they become resistant. To these drugs, let alone about the cost of these drugs. So these are some of the problems that we face. So what, can I, what else can I do? I can say, you know what? I'm going to protect healthy people and sick people by putting them under a bed net. Very simple. I put a barrier in between the mosquito and myself, a bed net. Very simple. And if I impregnate that net with an insecticide, then I can chase away mosquitoes. And if they land on the net, they pick up the insecticide and they die. And this is now a very, very popular method of malaria control around Africa. There's hundreds of millions of children of your age today, tonight, sleeping under bed nets. So that's a, that's a good method. Although it's not always that good because people don't always like to sleep under a bed net when it's hot and humid in the tropics because it obstructs airflow. They don't like it. Plus, you know, a net like this, you can turn it around and do something else with it. You can go to the river and you can fish with it. So it's the choice between getting malaria 
or filling your stomach. Yeah? Good. What next do we have? We have a shovel there. I can actually go into the landscape and I can fill all the breeding sites with a shovel with sand or I can drain a swamp or I can drain a marsh. And in that way, I have no more standing water and therefore I have no mosquitoes. The problem is that these little pools of water are all over the place. So how do I deal with that? That's really difficult. What else do I have? I can kill mosquitoes. I can spray them so I can put insecticides on them. I can go into a house and I put an insecticide on the wall. So when the mosquito comes and sits on the wall, it picks up the insecticide. Kaput. Dead. It works really well, but we have the same problem again. After some time, these mosquitoes are becoming resistant to these insecticides. So what else can we come up with? Do we have something better than that? And that's what I do every day in my job. I search, together with colleagues from around the world, I search for new, alternative, cheap ways of controlling malaria and mosquitoes. And this is a house in Tanzania. This is a house in Tanzania. And what have we done? We have studied very carefully the behavior of these mosquitoes. What do they do when they get close to a house? How do they behave themselves? Where do they fly into the house? And then we observed something really remarkable. We found that in a house like this, that these mosquitoes actually prefer to fly into the house in one particular spot. And that spot is called the eave. It's the gap between the roof and the wall. And why is that? It's because a person sleeping in that house is producing smell, body odor, is exhaling carbon dioxide from breath. And that is what the mosquito smells. So over distance, it is responding to these smells, flying in through that little gap, and then biting this person and giving that person malaria parasite. So we thought, what can we do? And we came up with something very extraordinary. Not YouTube, but the Eve tube. And the Eve tube is something as simple as this. You never thought that you can control malaria with a piece of PVC pipe, right? And that's exactly what we're doing in Tanzania at the moment. This is what it looks like in the real world, okay? And this is what it looks like in the house. So we've closed that gap underneath the roof. We've installed these pieces of PVC pipe, and in the back of it, you have a piece of netting. So that when the mosquito wants to fly into the house, into the tube, it contacts this piece of netting, and there it makes contact with an insecticide. And now you're going to tell me, hey, insecticides, you were talking about resistance. So we're not doing that. We're doing it much better than that. We're using biological control. We're doing it in a green way. For the last decade, we have been working on a method where we have now the spores of a fungus that we can put on this piece of gauze. And when mosquitoes contact it, over a period of six to eight days, they are eaten up by the fungus and they die a green way of controlling malaria. And you know what? The best news of it is we can do this for one euro per child per year. You know what one euro is, huh? This is one euro. Look, this, this is one euro. It's a Big Mac, okay? This is one euro. One download from iTunes, okay? This is one euro, a Red Bull. Imagine if you in the canteen of this school would say, I'm skipping my Red Bull today, I've got one euro, and I'm protecting a child from malaria in Africa for a whole year. And imagine if all of you would do that, and if all schools in Maastricht would do that, or in the Netherlands would do that. What could we accomplish in terms of controlling malaria for children in Africa? Now, I gave you the bad news in the beginning, but I think that with these very simple methods, we don't have to have a child dying every 45 seconds of malaria. We don't have to have 655,000 children dying every year. If we put all these concerted efforts together, I am sure that we can start making a difference. And gradually this number will be going down so that eventually we will become zero. And we end up with zero malaria.